question. Did you know beans provide nearly as much protein as meat? Did you know? Let's see a little bit more on this. Beans provide nearly as much protein as meat and are much lower in fat and calories. One cup of cooked beans contain 12 to 25 grams of protein. And we're going to look a little bit more at this. Went a little too quickly. Now, a lot of us think that, and I hear it every day, that how can you be a vegetarian? Where do you get your protein from? A lot of people think that if you don't have a piece of steak on your plate, you are very deficient in protein. So here are some sources of protein. Grains provide protein, and a few of them are listed here. Oatmeal, one cup of oatmeal gives you about six grams. A cup of brown rice, about five grams. Spaghetti, about six grams. Whole wheat bread, two slices, give you about six grams of protein. Because normally a slice of bread is about three grams if you get a good whole grain bread. Nuts, almonds, one ounce give you about six grams. Cashews, one ounce give you about four grams. Peanut butter, two tablespoons, give you about 10 grams of protein. So there are many sources of protein in the diet. Legumes, lentil, half a cup cooked, about eight grams. Lima beans, half a cup cooked, about the same amount. Red kidney beans, half a cup cooked, about eight grams. And here's one that's really high in protein, soybeans, half a cup cooked, 10 grams. And tofu, four ounces, give you about nine grams of protein. So there are many different, and these are just a few I listed. And um, people always think that if you don't eat meat, you cannot get protein. Um, but yes, we can get a lot of protein. Anything that is living has some source of protein. Amen. Even your fruits, you don't get much from it, but a little tiny bit. And if every little bit does add up. Very quick. Okay, so the question is, how much protein do we really need on a daily basis? <laughs> Here's the answer. <laughs> According to the RDA's recommendation, our protein requirement is 0 0.8 to 1 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Or if you want to go by pounds, 0 0.36 to 0 0.45 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So if you know your weight in pounds, you can multiply that by 0 0.36. That will give you uh, roughly what you need. And it's not as much as we think we need. For example, a person who weighs about 120 pounds may need just about 45, maybe 45 to 50 grams of protein a day. Um, we take it way out of control, the protein intake in our diet. Um, rough, roughly, the protein requirement is about 10 to 15 percent of total calories. So if you don't want to do the calculation and you know about how many calories you eat a day, about 10 percent of that will give you a much adequate amount of protein in the diet. The protein requirement for sport athletes, like runners, cyclists, and triathletes, are from 25 to 50% more than the rest of us. So most people are not running the marathon. So most people do not need the kind of protein. And the reason that they need a little bit more is that their body, they have to repair tissue. So they need a little bit more for repair of body tissue. Okay. Why protein is important in the body for growth and repair of tissues, for making disease-fighting antibodies, and for facilitating chemical reactions, those are some of the functions of protein in the, in the body. A high-protein diet can be dangerous. It can present danger. When the body is deprived of carbohydrates as its primary source of energy on a high-protein diet, it starts to rapidly break down fat for energy, and that's normal. This rapid fat breakdown results in the production of ketones. And this produces a very acid environment in the body and results in headache, dizziness, fatigue, and nausea. And a lot of people who go on these strict weight loss programs, they will tell you that they experience a lot of these symptoms when they cut their calories down and cut all, all carbohydrates out of the diet. 
High protein diets increase the risk of heart disease because they are generally high in saturated fats. The big slab of meat and all the, those are generally high in saturated fat. These diets also increase the risk of liver and kidney danger. And I can tell you, I have come across quite a few people who came into the hospital with kidney failure and in talking, in counseling, I'm like, okay, what have you been doing? And one nurse told me they were all on a high protein diet. Now she ended up on dialysis. So those things do excess can, it's not generally good. Yes. What is your degree in? Who? You. Me? Yes. <laughs> do I have to do that? Yes, because you, <laughs> you have a lot of visitors and we okay. need, they need to know. Uh, I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. So that's what I do. Um, the overload of protein puts extra strain on the liver to break down the protein and fat and also overworks the kidneys to eliminate the waste, pro the waste produced. So the liver tries to break down all of that. That's a lot of work on the liver. Then all the waste that is produced from the breakdown of protein, the kidneys have to try to get rid of that. That's an extra work on, we put on our system. And we really make our system extremely acidic also, which helps for the bringing a, in a much disease when our system is very acidic. Individuals with risk of kidney problem like diabetics should be especially careful not to eat a high protein diet. Man. We say without medical supervision, but I wouldn't even give you medical supervision. Just avoid doing it. Because diabetics have a high risk for kidney failure. And I have seen it so many times that diabetics are, some doctors actually do it for these people on high protein diet. I saw one patient came in with kidney failure. He told me, well, he had a big thing of soda drinking. He said, he, told me he doesn't drink water. He drinks Coke. And then his doctor put him on a high protein diet to lose weight. So not having liquids to flush his system, having Coke and a high protein diet that really did him and he came in with kidney failure. But he was very receptive. The next day I went to visit him. He had a, that big thing of Coke was a big thing of water. So um, <laughs> that does help. And it yeah. did help with sick condition too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we have to be careful. Amen. Okay, and here I'm gonna give you some food for thought. Many seem to think they have a right to treat their own bodies as they please, but they forget that their bodies are not their own. Their creator has formed them, has claims upon them that they cannot rightly throw off. And I have, I hear that so many times. It's my body, I'll do what I want with it. But no, it's not your body, it's not mine. God has claims. Amen. Every needless transgression of the law which God has established in our beings is virtually a violation of the law of God and is as great a sin in the sight of heaven as to break the Ten Commandments. So when we violate the laws of health, we are violating the laws that God has given us and it's as bad as not keeping the Ten Commandments. Ignorance upon this important subject is sin. Not a lot of sin. The light is now beaming upon us and we are without excuse if we do not cherish the light and become intelligent in regards to these things which it is our highest earthly interest to understand. So those of us who claim ignorance, we are too enlightened today to claim ignorance. So that is not gonna cut it either. And then I'm gonna leave you with what we started with. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's.